guys uh, I'm live just talking to you guys while I have my dinner and yeah I'm happy to answer any questions but um watching that made me angry again you know really really did piss me off again because it's like people oh it's about onions no it wasn't about onions it's about the fact that I was living with a guy who was being a racist and flipping at going out of his way to, you know, um, instigate arguments, proper winding us. So every time that like, Abdul Haq and I tried to talk, people, it didn't matter where it was. First, it was they were always picking on Abdul Haq. They wouldn't even let him, even in the situations where he was right, they were going up on him. Then they would gang up on Humera. And then I would end up sticking up for these people. So then they started taking up, you know, doing stuff for me. So, like, you've got this guy telling me that Africans should look at the brighter side of slavery. How we should be happy, you know. How we should be happy because Indians, apparently we, we Africans didn't build anything in Africa. It was all Indians and white people. Like... And, and I'm the bad guy because I got fed up with it, you know. And then you've got Sabah telling me that Nigeria deserved to be colonized because apparently we didn't put up a fight. I don't know what history book she read that in. Anyway, I hope you guys don't mind. I'm having Kabli Palau. Just to show you I'm, I'm not racist. I eat, I eat Kabli Palau, yeah? Big up to all my Afghan man them. But, yeah, so, you know, if you need to sit down on your, on your ass and tell me that I overreacted. But, boy... If you were me, wouldn't you be pissed off? Like, imagine that we should look at the brighter side of slavery. You know, and then you've got people on there with no interest in Islam. So every time you mention the deen, every time we talked about Islam, they would get angry. They would, you know, try and silence you. And I'm like, what's the point? Really, what is the point of coming on a program about Islam and Muslim. The, the, the program's title was Muslims Like Us, but every time the Quran was mentioned, Nyla and them would lose the plot. Now, you guys are calling me bully and all that. Tell me, if it was me who took someone else's stuff, and then when he asked me about it, squared up to him and started shouting, would you guys be calling him the bully or me? It's really easy to put, point the finger at people who look like me and who are my size and sound and talk like me and call us aggressors. If you're a black person and you've ever worked in an office where you're the only black person, you know what I'm talking about. Your white co-worker gets upset. Oh, he's just upset. Black guy gets angry. He's threatening. The whole time I didn't even shout. He was shouting and walking towards me. I said, okay, what are you going to do? All of a sudden, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm aggressive. I'm a bully. I don't understand that shit. But yeah, are you guys actually seeing this? You know, it's uh, it's ridiculous because this is part all part of the anti-blackness that Muslims face. Look, you got people like that. I'm, apparently, I'm aggressive to old people and women because I pulled up um, Sabah on her views on race. Every time we spoke about race. You know, she would tell us not to talk about it. A lot of that didn't even make it into the program. There were many times that we would try and talk about race. And boom. Oh, you guys talk about that race thing again. She, she said that Muslims need to blend in and be like the English. Bitch, I'm tanned. How am I supposed to blend in? Look at me, baby. I'm, I'm like this all year round. What am I supposed to do? Bleach? How'd that work out for Michael Jackson? We need to just fit in, you know? And Humaira had a good point. She was like, look, if Sabah goes out, yeah, with her scarf, she's, she doesn't worry about the EDL or those people that, you know why? Because they don't identify her as Muslim. So, you know, she said she's never experienced Islamophobia. Yeah, because she's white. Same with Bara. Ask Bara himself and he'll tell you. He didn't experience Islamophobia like me because he's blonde. He's got blue eyes. He looks German, you know, so 
He's not going to be as conscious of Islamophobia, even though he's Syrian, he might see what people say about Syrians, but he'll never experience it in person. Because most people who mean wouldn't know he's Syrian. And if he's on, he's on Twitter now, you can ask him, you know? Um, yeah, how do I make it so people can ask questions then? I want people to ask questions. Uh, Fatme, it's an interesting name, man. Fatme Zen something. So yeah, guys, um, it's easy to sit down and accuse me of, um, you know, being aggressive and whatnot. But how many of you have had to deal? How many of you have had to deal with, you know, imagine what it's like. I mean, we get irritated living with our own brothers and sisters, right? I had to live with 10 strangers for 10 days. And, you know, the producers, bless them, they had good intentions, but I'm guessing their definition of practicing was not the same because we were told we'd be in the house with 10 practicing Muslims. So, lo and behold, I didn't know I was going to be in the house with people that hate the Quran. You know? But yeah, it was a fun experience and everything. You know what? If you want to ask me, tweet at me. Tweet me your questions, innit? <laughs> Al Kashmiri. Boy, <laughs> I'm not even going to repeat what you just said. And here's the thing. My problems with the boy have nothing to do with sexuality or the fact, you know, the fact that he's gay. Whatever, man. I'm not saying I condone it or that it's halal. But my issue with him is that he did not follow the tenets of my philosophy, which is don't be a dick. Because if you tell an African he should be happy about slavery because of the bright side, you've been a dick. Big up for being married to an Asian. No, big up my wife, man. She's a G. Honestly. I'm an, uh, I'm a flipping unofficial, I'm an honorary Punjabi, you know? Gaburu Punjabi. Um, <laughs> I love how they put the, like, subtitles for me when I say Gore. And yeah, that's another thing. Like, so we moved to the house now, and nobody, a house full of Asians, and nobody could cook a Jeep. Just say a jeep. So I decided, you know what? I don't want to eat curry every day anyway. You know, um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna cook. And these guys have never met most of those people in the house. A couple of them had never actually met an African before. I know. So I, you know, I was cooking jollof rice every day, yasa, all these things. Hey, na jahan sasa nu. Hana Ibrahim to Rebi Hausa kuma Rebi kuma nyamiri. So yeah, sorry guys, I just have to keep it real for my North Nigerian peeps. But yeah, so it's, it's like, you know, I was in this house and at one point I became like the father. I became like the father figure of the house, if you know what I mean. So, you know, it, 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 it was annoying because everybody, everybody, like when they had problems, they would run to our room and cry. Me and Abdul Haq, the same Abdul Haq they were slagging off. And don't get me wrong, I disagree with Abdul Haq on many issues, but to me, it's easy to sit down and just call him a piece of shit. It's easy to yell at him. It's easy to castigate him. But I sat down and debated the guy. It, it didn't make it into the program. Again, maybe it wasn't relevant, but you know, you saw me confront Abdul Haq about the Shia thing. So ask yourself, if I, conf if I confronted him about that, then don't you think I would have confronted him about other things? Hmm? You know, so I confronted him. Why do you think he went and apologized to the sister? Or when I spoke to her, who do you think influenced him to do that? Obviously, he's a grown man with his own uncle, but, you know, I was challenging Abdul Haq in the house. And I think the best way to challenge people is, you know, to talk to them. 
not kiss their ass and hug them like some people did, but sit down and have a conversation with a man, you understand? You know, like, yeah, and you guys have to remember, like, in the face of all this provocation, I believe I was actually very calm. Remember that I'm, I'm a boy, I live in South London, yeah? I'm an African man, I grew up in Nigeria and I live in Croydon, right? Do you understand how difficult it is for someone like me to have someone get in my face and shout and react the way I did, as calmly as I did? For a man as proud as me to hear the ignorance these people were spewing and be the bigger person for about 10 days. Think about it, if I was aggressive, why is it only at the end of the program that I started getting into arguments? Ask yourself that. You know? Like I said, it's really easy to paint the big black South London brother as aggressive. And the little camp Asian guy. He's not even little, he's a rugby player for God's sake. You know what I mean? He's the class that camp guy as a victim. And I'm not even blaming the producers of the show. I'm just saying you people that are complaining that, oh, man should have been calm. Would you have been calm? How many of you are calm now? <laughs> so say, so say, well, I like that, Can you follow him, man? How about, I need more house followers. I miss home. Ko yanga ki ke so yeah like i was saying like you know these people are here saying all this kind of stuff all these disgusting things all these disgusting things sam lee can't shut up man but if you're name well well if he, i didn't cuss his mom i said his mom didn't teach him manners and evidently she didn't this guy is someone that put raw minced meat in a flipping fridge above somebody's cooked food and let blood drip into it and you're telling me about yeah i mean i'm not cussing his mom his mom didn't teach him manners i said it again what <clears throat> so anyone else have anything to say what a war <laughs> you guys are funny well yeah imagine living in a house full of people that talk like that and then this is my problem with wider society and Muslims as well. Because the house is full of Asians. They weren't all bad. But. How many of them did you see speak out? About what was going on in the house? Hmm? How many? They all saw what was going on in private. A couple of them even said so. When the cameras were off. But while it was happening, everybody kept quiet. Chat's limited to people I follow. Is there any way I can edit this while um Is there any way I can edit this while I'm online with you guys? Cause I wanna, you know, I wanna interact. I wanna interact with you guys, you know? It's not like I've got anything else to do tonight. Oh wow, watching myself on the screen, that is so cool. Well, light technology has gone so far right now. Technology has really gone far. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is almost like Halal Babe Station. Hi guys! Astaghfirullah. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this Badria Jibril girl still tweeting at me? Listen, if you're happy for Asians to call you and treat you a certain kind of way and you think I should be fine, fine, go. Go, go, go work as a maid in Pakistan or somewhere, man. Don't tell me that I should accept people being abusive to me. You know, no, don't tell me that, man. Some girl telling me about how, oh, what was it like living with Saba? Saba, or how you say her name? At first, we thought she was all right. But then, the views started coming out. She grew up in India when India was still a colony under the British. 
How crazy is that? So she grew up in a rich middle class family watching brown people serve her hand and foot. So of course, when one of such people has an opinion, when I was cooking food for everybody and whatnot, she loved me. She did. She said that I was um, God in man. Those were her words. Now, Uzu Billah, nobody can be God. Yeah, Uzu Billah, Shirk. But she said that those were her words. But as soon as the little Negro had an opinion, <laughs> I became an uppity Negro then, innit? It was interesting because she always told Abdul Haq how he, he's not knowledgeable, he's not a scholar. But she never quoted no hadith though. Nobody did. In the house, I think it was only me and Bara who actually were able to argue with Abdul Haq using Islam. That's why you need to learn your religion. If you want to defeat extremism, you won't, ex you won't defeat it by abandoning your religion. Wallahi, you won't. The more ignorant you are of your religion, the more you're helping extremists because if there's not good people out there to explain what Islam teaches, then there's nobody that's going to help de-radicalize these people. And then these think tanks like Quilliam, Prevent and whatnot will come from nowhere and put nonsense in people's heads about what Islam should be. You know, if there was someone else who knew Quran and Sunnah in Abdul Haq's life when he first became Muslim and was able to teach him Islam as a normal, you know, whatever, he wouldn't be on the path that he's on now, or he was on. But unfortunately, Muslims have this culture of wanting to gather shahadas. Then when someone takes shahada, you just F off and leave them alone. And that's what happened to Abdul Haq. All the normal Muslim people in the house, all the normal Muslim people in Abdul Haq's life were people that didn't practice. So the only practicing Muslims he saw were the ones that were terrorists. Supporters. The same way everyone else in Muhajirun asked them, most of the people who aren't like them that they know, that are born Muslims. It's 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 just they're they're, they're not practicing. I mean, look at who the look at the people on the show. These people are now are meant to look like what a good Muslim looks like that isn't violent, that isn't dangerous. These are people, you know, I'm not going to name names, but about three people in that house had never read the Quran before. I won't tell you who they are, you can guess for yourself. One of them likes taking people's onions. Yeah, never read the Quran before, but he was quick to try and, you know, instigate debate with me. For talking about this in the Quran. And that's something I don't like because, you know, you're, you're lying to people. You're saying something that is in the religion, isn't really in the religion, just to make it look better for other people. But let me ask you something. If you lie to a non-Muslim and tell them something isn't a part of Islam and they find out that it is, you've done, don't you think you've done a disservice to your religion? Don't you think people are going to then be pushed further away from Islam because you've lied now to try and promote Islam? So, that's part of my frustration. Like, I was having a conversation with this guy who wanted to know about heaven and hell. And I said, yeah, there's heaven and hell in the Quran. But I don't necessarily think that it's... Um, a good way of preaching to always tell people that they're going to hell. I don't think it's a good way of preaching at all because you scare people away from Islam. You need to talk about mercy as well as punishment. You can't just talk about punishment. That's the point I was trying to make. And then Farhan came, oh, I don't believe in heaven. I'm not talking about what you believe in, bruv. I'm talking about what's in the Quran and flowing straight from the survival scrolls. You're talking about what you think. You know, and, and it was frustrating because it's like... If you don't like Islam, if you don't believe in the Quran, you don't believe in Hadith, you don't believe in it, then why do you want to even call yourself a Muslim? I'm not saying he's not. But what's the point? If you hate Islam so much that whenever people talk about what's there and proven in the religion, it makes you angry. 
you know, why, why even bother being a Muslim? If I didn't like a religion, I wouldn't be part of the religion. It's as simple as that. You know, so, yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I think that the producers of this show may have had good intentions, but I think uh, it's hard to compress everything that happened on that show within 10 days into two episodes. Uh, maybe the BBC should have given them more funding or something. I don't know, but, you know, because I hope some positive comes out of it. Um, I hope some positives come out of it because, you know, I, I, there, there was some positives, but I just think, yeah, 10 days with those kind of characters. And I hope Allah guides... I hope Allah guides those people because I feel, you know, like you had Nyla writing letters to God. Really? Like, if you don't believe in Salah, which is one of the pillars of Islam, then... I, letter, not even emails, letters. And one day somebody wrote back to her. And if so, how does she know it was God? Does she know God's handwriting? Nonsense. Nonsense. But yeah, alhamdulillah, I made it out of the house alive. <laughs> And uh, it was it was a good experience. I got to see. Thing is, I already know that there are other types of Muslims. I I already know that uh, there are people with different views from myself. I'm already aware of that. It was just the first time I'd um, been around people who were so close-minded, you know. Yeah, now I'm getting the threats and abuse on uh, on Facebook. <laughs> Whatever, man. I wish you would. Um, but yeah, you know. Um, thank you guys for your support. Um, I'm glad it's all over, done and dusted. And uh, you know, like I said, I hope I didn't. You know, if you if you don't like something I did on the show, then. That's you, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's just, it just shows you, you know, like, when people talk about the Muslim Ummah. And what's funny as well is a lot of these, like, I see a lot of Asians and Arabs on, uh, on Facebook who are angry because I talked about anti-blackness <coughs> in Islam. But it's like, until you know what it's like for people to send, um, to make dua that something bad happens to your two-year-old daughter. Simply because her parents come from different backgrounds. Everybody shut up. You know, everybody, if an Arab talks about racism that Arabs suffer, it's fine. If Pakistani talks about the racism Pakistani suffer, it's fine. The moment a black man talks about the black experience, Rubai, Akhi, you're a Hebrew Israelite. Akhi, you're a flipping um, nation of Islam. Akhi, you're a nationalist. I didn't know black was a nation. No, but it's okay for everyone else. You know, people are more angry about me discussing racism than the fact that there is racism in our communities. How sad is that? You know? But, yeah. And it's a key thing to notice how when that stuff popped off in the kitchen, all the Asians just grouped together on one side. It was only Abdul Hakam Barah that stood with me. Not that I needed help where I was, you know, but it just shows you even the ones that I was cool with that weren't taking part in the argument just naturally found themselves walking and standing with each other. You know? So... <sighs> Just that house, as mad as it is, kind of does show you a genuine picture to some extent. The problems we have in the Muslim community. Like they were happy to live in filth until a Gora was coming. Until they saw a white man coming. They, they heard that non-Muslims were coming. They don't care about the fact that they're living in filth. They don't care about the fact that the, the kitchen was in an unhygienic condition. They were eating food from a kitchen that hadn't been cleaned 
in five or six days with food all over. They were leaving bloody meat in the fridge. But as soon as they heard that a non-Muslim was coming to the house, all of a sudden they, they, you know, they knew how to clean. They knew how to, you know, that's hypocrisy, bruv. You know, I the only reason I people say, well, why didn't you clean up? Well, if I'm cooking all the bloody meals, I'm not gonna clean too. I'm not flipping Django, mate. Like the only reason, I mean, yeah, it's just ridiculous, you know. And they were all sh trying to show up for the camera, as you can see. Alhamdulillah, whether good or bad, I, I I said what I felt, you know. And then money talking shit when I wasn't in the room. <laughs> Pack off, you are a bully. <laughs> days <laughs> you're just bully <laughs> joke thing man but yeah anyway I'm gonna head off now get ready to go to sleep I might come back on actually if I can't sleep if I'm bored and we can chat some more but hold tight you man in it